is my buddy Adam. He's never killed a deer before and his budget for this challenge is $1,000. And this is me. I've killed quite a few deer, but my budget is only $100. The challenge is simple. Who can kill a deer first, whose deer is bigger, and who can cook it the best? We headed on down to our closest Cabela's and this is when we started shopping. All right, Adam, our journey begins. You we get $1,000, I get $100. What are you thinking? What kind of weapon are you thinking of? Well, I'm gonna go crossbow. I'm thinking for me, since I don't have much money, I don't even know if I'll be able to afford a compound bow. That's what I'm saying, dude. Even some of their cheapest compound bows are still like 400 bucks. Dude, I might have to legit go get like a long bow or something. Here's all the releases. If I bought a compound bow, I'd have to spend another 100 on a release. And you literally can't do that because I literally have 100 bucks. The thing is like for both of us, if we get a bow, don't forget we have to get arrows, broadheads, practice tips. And I'll let us use my own target, so. Oh snap, is that the one for me? It's still 419 bucks, and that's just a longbow. Well, dang, buddy, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to hunt or not. I may just have to go find me a good rock out in the parking lot. Here's the thing, though. Since I have $100, you have $1,000. If I accidentally spend $150, that means you actually get $1,500. So you have a lot of money to spend. Ahead, what do you think about those? That's the Invader I, X4. I don't know nothing about them, I'll just be honest. Pull it down, let's look at that. That may be the move right there. 400 bucks. That's cheaper than that longbow over there. How you feel that? It feels good. It may be the move right there. Uh, looking over there, I think I may see the bow I have to get. It might be the only thing under 100 bucks here. That ain't looking good for me. That right there is 50 bucks. You couldn't kill nothing with this. I know. Let's just try to get away from this section. I don't think it, this ain't where we need to be. There's your bolts. How much are we running right there? 50 bucks. That ain't bad either. But if you buy the right one, it may come with bolts. You may be all right. It's true. Hey, you got the money to spend. You may want to come up here and buy you a tree stand, buddy. Looks like I'm gonna have to hunt off the ground, but you may get a tree stand. Let's look at the trail cameras, boys. As for me, uh, <laughs> I couldn't even afford a trail camera strap, so I'm not gonna get too excited in this section. So about $600. Again. This thing better bring the deer to me. Hold up now, back up the bus. I think we found something. We may make this work now. A 50 pound bow, 150 bucks. That'd put your budget up to like a 1500 that's it i think it might be now what do you have to have with the recurve arrows and broadheads no no release no nothing like that <laughs> that's my only item that's all i get as we left Cabela's, we wanted to head into Sportsman's Warehouse and see what they had. They really didn't have anything except some cool taxidermy, but while we were there, I did let Adam find some spice for us for later in the episode when we cook up the deer. How would this be good? You want to try it? Let's try it. Let's try it. And after Sportsman's Warehouse, we headed back home to show you guys what we got. All right, now we're back home. We're going to go over exactly what we got. First thing, Adam, show us your main weapon of choice. I got a Wicked Ridge crossbow. I don't know much about it, but it looks good and it's a good price. They said it needs to be shot with Wicked Ridge bolts. So show us your Wicked Ridge bolts. Now these are glow in the dark. Well, kind of. Now I'll start off with my weapon of choice. We got the Cabela's brand Warden <laughs> Recurve. It appears to be just some sticks. And floss. <laughs> yeah, and floss for the string. I have never shot a recurve before, so it should be fun. There's the string. We have to figure out how to put that together, and uh, that's the bow. We also have to figure out how to put that together. Then since mine didn't come with arrows, I had to buy arrows, and I bought these right here. They have real feathers on them, and apparently this is what you need to shoot traditional recurve stuff. And that's all I got. Here's my bra. Broadheads, we got three of them. Rocky First Cut X, crossbow broadheads. I don't know nothing about them. They look sharp. Hopefully I can kill something with it. And then I got three Tacticams. <laughs> I don't know why I need three. Because you have the budget. <laughs> I got three of them. Hopefully we can see something big come on camera. And then I got a Hawk Mega Combat tree stand package. It comes with a whole bunch of stuff. It comes with a safety line kit. What's that for? Uh, I guess it's going to hold me to the tree. I'll be honest. I don't know what we're going to end up spending on this. Two eighty nine. dollars That's a lot. And this seat looks awful. <laughs> it looks like I'm about to be sitting on... Fence. I'm literally I'm sitting on metal. That's where your feet go. Your butt goes here. Where's my back going against the tree? Yeah, that rope pulls you up like a ratchet strap. Oh, I thought this was my seat, and then this was my your headrest. My, my headrest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that makes more sense. But still, every noob hunter has to have a way for the deer to come to them, and that's corn. So I got three bags of it because it's probably gonna take all three bags. I also got a hunting blind. This is one of the ones you can see through. It's a tidly. We didn't actually buy that, but I had it from last year, and we're going to go ahead and let him use it. And this right here. That's your little seat. Can I bring it out on a tree stand? Uh, no, you don't use that in a tree stand. That'd be more comfortable. That comes in at about 40 bucks. 
How's that feel? Feel pretty good. Not 40 bucks good. <laughs> All right, fine. We'll, we'll say 20. But then last but definitely not least, Adam got us some uh, something. Traeger rub. Everything rub, I think. It smells go. good, though. And with all my stuff here, that brings my total to only $210. $110 over budget, but cut me some slack, guys. There's not much you can do with 100 bucks. And that brings Adam's budget to $1,408. That's right. So now we have to get your crossbow sided in, and we have to get my bow put together. Let's try to figure that out first. Which one goes up? This one's top. All right. I think we can do this. Don't it need to go like that, though? Mm. Mm. There's only one way to find out. It explodes on you. It was built wrong. That is a true statement. <laughs> Boom! It looks sweet. I look like Indian. All right. All right. So which way does the short end go? They got to give me more instructions. Oh, is this it? Yeah. Oh, never mind. All right, here we go. We got to rig this up somehow. No, you got it backwards. It can't shoot that way. Oh, well, yeah? No. Yeah. I'm stupid then. Slide the larger loop on the bowstring over the top limb and slide it midway down the limb. I need to know if I'm doing it the right way or not. I have actually shot one similar to this, but not really anything like this. Should have got a crossbow. <laughs> Pulled out the big toe strap, boys. I'm going to pull it up and you see if you can... Put it in there, all right? Okay. I'm giving it all I got, boys. Hang on. Hang on, there. hang on, hang on. Hang on. Did we get it? I, I think we got it. it. Buddy, that's scary. We had to put the camera down. <laughs> We're in. Hey. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, it sounds like it's cracking. It's probably because it is. <laughs> Spooky. So now we're going to go ahead and side in Adam's crossbow. Then we're going to head down in the basement and get my arrows built. And then me and Adam's going to have a little competition to see who gets first pick at their hunting spot. We'll do 20 yards. Closest one to hit center wins. This right here is going to be my shot. By the way, guys, that first spot, that's pretty big deal. That could kill a deer. Now let's see if Adam can do it. All right, here you go. Moment of truth. Oh, let's see. I think you beat me. <laughs> nope. I'm in the yellow. I was very close to beating you right there. You're, you're hitting right there. I'm hitting over here. So you're a little bit closer. <laughs> Barely. They'll both kill a deer, though. All right, Adam. Now we're going to head out to the farm. We're going to find you a place to hunt. Let you pick it out. We'll put out that corner and show cameras, and we'll get the pre-hunt started. Let's do it. We're moving into Adam's spot, and we're looking at a deer. That is a good sign. He ain't moving either. No, that's a good sign. We could have killed him right now, but that would borderline be poaching. You're lucky this time, buddy. <laughs> Adam, this may be the spot you pick. It's the, oh, and there's two more deer right there. That's what I'm saying. They're already locking this spot. Yeah. Oh, there's three deer. What's a spike? Really? There's one, two, and three. Look what they're here for, though. This food plot we planted a little while, it's actually starting to do really good, and they're absolutely loving it. All right, Adam, since you won the shooting competition, where do you want to hunt? Uh, obviously this field. All right, that's probably a good. That's probably a good idea. Where else would a deer want to be? You got winter wheat. You got acorns. You got corn. This may be the place to be. If we set up the blind right here, he is 22 yards from right here, other side of the field, 47 yards. That's a doable shot. We could set it up right here. Okay. Trying to open up one of those is about like trying to put blue jeans on upside down in the dark at night. All right, all right, all right, all right. That's not obvious at all. How's that look? Pretty sweet, I ain't gonna lie. All right, there's your blind set up. Now, uh, you wanna put corn out? Yeah, I'm a good spot for it. Where you think's a good spot? Where, wherever you want. You're the hunter in this situation. <laughs> Tell us what you're doing and why you're doing it. There's deer poop, so I know he has came to this exact spot to poop, but I don't poop where I eat, so new location. Okay. What do you think that is, 30 yards? Yeah, probably. That's right looks good to me. Or do you wanna go higher? I think yes, you got the best of both worlds. Okay. You look around, you got grass, whatever it is, wheat. Right there, you got acorns. And right here, you got corn. I like it. Let's do it. Where do you think you want to put up that trail camera at? Maybe over here? Well, no, I'm going to let you figure it out. Maybe over there. All right. I'm going to spine shot mine. How's that? Well, I ain't got to chase him down. Hey, there you go. Why don't people do that? And you're smart as you. <laughs> what makes you want to put it in this location? So it's aiming at my corn. Okay. Adam, that's the wrong way. I've never been able to do this. It's one of the hardest things you'll ever have to do as a hunter. That is not the way you do it. <laughs> You're completely not even using the spring part. Who needs it? <laughs> we'll come back tomorrow. It's going to be laying there. That ain't going nowhere, dude. All right, cool. 
Sure, sounds like a plan to me. Now for you guys who have used a recurve before, you know it's not gonna be easy. So the very next day, I headed out my yard and started practicing, really trying to get the hang of what I was doing. I was shooting here, I was shooting there, just throwing a lot of shots downrange, but unfortunately I just wasn't getting the groups I was wanting to be comfortable enough to go hunting with. The next day, Adam was ready to go hunting for his deer. All right, it's game day, you ready? I'm ready, this is as much camo as I own and I only own a quarter of it. Anyways, here we go, we're heading out. This is Adam's deer hunt. I'm just filming. Unfortunately, our blind had been blowed away from the wind, so Adam had to go over in the ditch, pick it up, and then drag it back over to where he's actually gonna hunt. I think we could honestly just hunt just like that. We sat down for a little bit and everything was going really good, and then we heard something over to our left. And it was a squirrel. Which is cool because squirrels are really cool and squirrels, squirrels taste good. But we didn't want to shoot it because we knew there was a good chance deer could come out. A little bit later, and that's exactly what happened. Oh, that's the button buck. That's the button buck. Don't shoot it. There'll be more. There'll be more. Adam wants to shoot the button buck so bad. If nothing else shows up, we can kill the button buck. But there'll be more. Forty yards. Thanks, man. Crap. That might be good. <laughs> I think I missed. Did you miss? Do you feel like you missed? No. It could have went straight through it. It should have went straight through it. It looked good. <laughs> Don't give me a high five yet. We, we don't know. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. You voluntarily took a button buck over a doe. It's only my last time ever. I told you a doe. <laughs> <laughs> I told you a doe is 100% coming. I don't see it. <laughs> because it ain't here yet. <laughs> Your farty face. <laughs> Adam, we don't know if you killed it yet. Well, it <laughs> Oh my gosh. We might have one we might have one down. I don't know. He shot it's about the size of a dog. <laughs> it's about the size of a beagle. I mean we don't know if he killed it yet. We still think he might have missed. Well I see the arrow in the ground. Congratulations, buddy. I, I don't know. He, I probably didn't kill it. We don't know if he killed it yet. He said he wanted to kill one early at well, he'd go watch the game. I got I got a Yankee game tomorrow, just at seven o'clock. <laughs> How do you feel? Well, I don't know. I don't think it's a good sign that I see the arrow. Well, I don't know. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I see a white feather that's red. Look at it. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh snap, boys. I think we got a dead uh -oh. button bug. That's what I'm talking about. Uh -oh. Again? <laughs> Hey, what I tell you, if it's brown, it's down, baby. <laughs> All right, guys, me and Adam are going to re-watch live the footage of that kill shot. Don't we'll watch frame by frame. Oh, there it goes. There goes the arrow. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> That's about as good as it can get. Look at that. If the deer hadn't jumped down, you may not have hit it as good as you did. I can taste him already, baby. You wanna go look for yep, him? Let's go. There's literally chunks of meat sitting out here, dude. It looked like a good hit. So. I don't see no blood, though. Well. No, there's blood. No, that ain't blood. We might want to be quiet up here because he may not have went down the way we thought he did. It may not have been such a great shot after all. Take it real slow. You found blood? That ain't much blood. I don't know. Let's look and see if we can find out where he went in. And then we may back up. There, here's his blood. He went right through there. What do you see there? I see blood right here. It's not much, but it's a little. And he's not bleeding really great. Let's stop right here and let's give him time to die. Throughout the night, we tracked the blood. Unfortunately, this deer just didn't want to bleed much, so it was really only leaving little drops here and little drops there. And it was making it extremely difficult for us to find a solid blood trail and actually gain ground. Knowing that the shot actually wasn't the best shot, we decided to pull out and just give it time to die and come back later. And so the next day, that's exactly what I did. I came out here, looked around, did a true grid search, and lo and behold, I looked over 
and there was the deer sitting there. I was looking back at the footage. I thought this dude was gonna survive. He's laying right here. Let's go at him. Oh my goodness. Dude, this is awesome. And I will say this, he's a little bloated. I think that's okay. It actually snowed yesterday. I know that it's so easy to look at the blood trail and say it's just bleeding little drops. There's no way, but oftentimes if you hit a deer in the red area, like these few shots right here, whether it's a gut shot, whether it's a flesh shot, that deer's gonna die. You just don't know where. So if you can't find it that night, look around the next day because he may just be piled up right here in a ditch. What do you think? Well, I'm excited. You called me while I was at work. I had to come leave right away. Where did you find him at? Well, let me go show you. Okay. The deer was actually right there in that in that drain. There's a possibility we walked by and it was dead right there. But by looking at the blood, I don't think it died immediately. I feel like it took at least eight hours. But when you look at the hit, this is the exit. And look what a dang entrance. Right there. Now, how did it not bleed? That's a perfect shot. It should be double lung. But how did it not bleed at all? I think we're gonna find out. You start me off. All right. I don't wanna, I don't wanna puncture no guts. Brought to you by KG Pocket Knife. Available at Kendall Grade 1.com slash shop. First link in the description. The sharpest pocket knife you can get. Might, may not, may or may not be true. You just don't wanna cut the guts. He is bloated. See, it's gonna go pfft. He's gonna stink. No, he don't stink. Shoot, let's make your fingers after that one. All right, that was my vault. Oopsie doopsie. What'd you hit? Stomach. Buddy, look at that! Y'all can't see anything, but I don't know how this thing ran as far as it did. It's full of blood now. He should have went down a long time ago. Here we go. So that's the lungs. Buddy, what in the world? I obliterated the lungs. You did great on the lungs. You hit the top of one lung and the top of another lung, which is still a good lung shot. So you basically hit really high lung. The next day after we recovered Adam's deer, I went back out in the yard and kept shooting. At this point, I probably have 10 different sessions out here shooting the bow, just trying to get my technique down. And honestly, I'm just really not making a ton of progress. With a recurve bow, I know it takes a lot of skill and even more practice. And so at this point, that's just what I'm trying to do. Put as much time into it as possible, but I'm not gonna go hunting until I'm confident I can kill a deer in one shot. All right, guys, it's been almost three months since we bought that recurve, and we're finally going on our first hunt. I've been practicing quite a bit, but at the end of the day, I've still only had this bow for about three months, so. And here we go, guys. No, I didn't buy the shack, but the shack's gonna be here whether I use it or not, so I'm gonna use it. I'll be lucky if I can even pull the bow back in here. It's not a big building. All right, guys, it is January. My season is ticking down rapidly to kill a deer. I've literally been hunting since September, September, whatever the month is, after August, I don't know how to say it. I've been hunting off and on with this recurve, and guys, I've just not had any luck. But since season's literally almost out, I went ahead and gave myself a little handicap. I'm gonna give myself a tree saddle just so that maybe I can actually get it done. That's something and this isn't how I expected this to go, but I'll take it. It may not be a deer, but we're eating good tonight. Ah, I 
cannot believe it, dude. I literally cannot believe that. Dude, what just happened? That was so awesome. I was sitting here waiting for a deer, but dude, whenever I looked up and saw that fox, at first I thought the stinking thing was a bobcat, but he came right through here. I got my bow up, full back shot, killed him. <sighs> I'm just kidding, guys. I shot him with the pistol. Not like y'all didn't know that, but I'm just, listen, dude, Adam, do you see Adam? Huh? Do you see Adam anywhere? Yeah, me neither. Well, as far as we know, we'll keep this between me and you. I just shot that thing with my bow. Let's get down and look at it. Let me check my arrow right here. I know for a fact that I missed it with the bow. If we're gonna be completely honest though, I was actually really close. Like I was actually like, I was within a hand's distance from actually hitting him with the bow. Where's my arrow though? Oh, it's, oh my goodness. Dude, it was closer than I thought. My arrow is right there and he was right there on that trail. Dude, that was so close to him, but unfortunately, just didn't make it happen. Then he walked right over there, pulled out the stinking pistol, dude. That's why you always take a pistol when you're bow hunting. I didn't plan on shooting a fox with this bad boy, but I definitely planned on mowing down a meth head if I had to. But let's check out this stinking fox. Oh, I think I rolled him over in here, didn't I? I stinking rolled this guy. Perfect, right there in front of the shoulder. Sweet gray fox. Now, some y'all may be saying, KG, why did you shoot that poor little gray fox? Well, one, I'm gonna eat it. Two, we can use its fur. And three, I needed to thin them out of this place anyway. I've had a trail camera up here before. We have a ton of predators out here. Literally a ton. And uh, these guys need thinned down a little bit. There he is compared to my boots, so it's actually a pretty dang good sized gray fox. Awesome, sweet. All right guys, so we headed to the store and got exactly what we need. First up, Adam's gonna be cooking up his deer. We gonna be cooking. I'm gonna be cooking some country fried venison. Ooh, better than fried chicken. I cut the uh, tenderloin in about an inch sections. Inch? Yeah, about an inch. What do you think that is? That ain't an Half inch. an inch sections. Yeah, there you Quarter go, there you inch, go. Same thing. So first I start out, I got me a coffee filter. Put a little flour, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and a little bit of Cajun seasoning. I put that all in there. I put the tenderloin inside the flour, mix it around, get the grease good and hot. Gotta make sure it's good and hot. I'm gonna start a grease fire in the house. And it's gonna sizzle a lot. You don't wanna take it out until it's golden brown. And that's when it's done. And that's basically all I've done. And here it is, the nice golden brown. That looks good. I think so. That looks really good. All right, let's try it, I guess. All right, you eating your piece? Let me try my piece. I right hear a minute, I gotta go in there and cook a fox, so we'll see how that goes. I like that. How's that piece since I cut it different? I feel like I probably like the wider pieces better. Yeah. Like this. What would you rate it? Honestly, it's like it's like it's like deer chicken nuggets. Yeah. And it's really good. Probably like, I'd say ten. I'd order it. Alright guys, now it's my turn. We're going to cook some fox fried rice. My first step is to actually get this uh, pre-made fried rice. I don't actually know what fried rice is, so I just went ahead and bought it all together. And this one's actually chicken fried rice. So first thing, I'm gonna go ahead and pop that in the microwave. Then I'm gonna be getting my pan ready, put a little oil in the bottom of it. And then I'm gonna take the fox meat and strip it up into chunks, pretty small, that way we can put them in our mouth and eat them pretty easy. Then I'm gonna take all the little bite-sized pieces, put them in the pan, cook them pretty hot and pretty fast. Once they get pretty well done, I'm gonna take the fried rice out of the microwave, then just dump it straight into the pan, cook it all around for just a second, and then it's literally ready to eat. Instead of chicken, it's just fox. All right, what do you think? I think it looks really good. I think it looks really good too. Smells good. Wendy's fork, and here's my KFC spork. I'm gonna go one good bite right there. It's definitely tougher. It's a little wild. Do you taste wild? No. Maybe it's just me. Now the rice is really good. I think I just put too much pepper on that piece. Oh, it's, good. it's actually really good. It's actually really, really, really good, dude. If you had a sauce to go on this. Oh, yum yum sauce? That's not bad at all. I mean, it's good. Would you order it? I probably couldn't afford it. What do I give it? I'd give it an eight. We may or may not have trichinosis. Click it over here if you want to see a cheap versus expensive squirrel hunting challenge or right over here for whenever I went deer hunting with a pistol for the first time. <laughs> 